Hi. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Sean Smith, and I'm a social media educator. I teach social media in, in schools and to parents and teens. Uh, I've been in the social media sphere for, for a long time, in fact, before it was actually called social media. I was working on a blog post today about the phenomenon of the creep catchers, those individuals who go out and find suspected pedophiles and child abusers and, and out them on social media. And as a social media educator, one of the things that I teach kids is about the social media mob and how it's so easy to get into the, the, the dog pile and go after a person or go after a particular topic without really understanding the full ramifications of what that conversation can potentially do. Now, as a parent, I appreciate what the creep catchers are trying to accomplish here, that they are trying to find those people that the authorities haven't been successful in finding. But we also have to keep in mind that in that process of finding, charging, convicting, and then incarcerating a pedophile, there's a long process. And one of the things that I see in the conversation online all the time is that the police aren't doing enough and that the process takes too long. And this is true to a point. The police have limited resources in order to do all the things that they need to do. And the process of being able to gather evidence and make it admissible in court is a long one. In an instance down in, in the lower mainland where we were dealing with a sports coach, that was a seven month investigation by the RCMP just to get the person charged. So when the creep catchers go out with the frustration that the RCMP are not doing anything for the, the identification of this person, or they've supplied information to the RCMP and it's taken months and there's been no action, we have to think, is social media the best way to handle this situation? There are risks. Certainly one of the risks that I point out in the conversations that I've entered is, are we breaking the law in our identification of somebody who they feel is breaking the law? Under the Criminal Code of Canada, if you chase somebody incessantly, if you go after them to their home, to their workplace, if you harass them on the phone, if you're going after them for something that you feel that they've done or they've done to you, but it's unwanted, and perhaps unwarranted, you are potentially breaking the law. It's called criminal harassment. And if you're a creep catcher, I would think that the last thing that you would want to do is leave a door open for a potential sex offender to get out on a technicality. Your technicality. There's also the aspect that the social media mob is a mob. It cannot be controlled, and it certainly cannot be controlled by those who have created the content that they're mobbing about. In a recent incident in Langley, where a creep catcher outed a school principal, the mob went way off the rails. Let's kill the motherfucker. That's an open threat online. People were asking where this person lived or where they worked. Not so that they had the information for themselves, but obviously in the conversation because they wanted to handle this person themselves. And then we have issues where what if the person wasn't found? The person was supposed to have been found on a criminal record check. He's a vice principal or he's a principal. How come he wasn't identified on a criminal record check? Well, so this is where part of the problem lies in the lack of knowledge that people have about how the system works. How are you found on a criminal record check if you don't have a criminal record? So context and understanding by the mob is missed. Then we have the issue about the misidentified person, where an issue in Langley, or in Surrey rather, a person was misidentified by a creep catchers organization and spent a week going through a personal hell where people from the social media mob were even going so far as to say to their employer, you should fire this person. They're a social media predator. They're a pedophile. When in fact they weren't. But because there was this limited evidence issued by the creep catchers, 
and wrong at that, this person now has to have this persona of being a pedophile following him for the rest of his life because the internet doesn't forget even if the creep catchers do, even if the mob does. Six months, a year, five years from now, this story could pop up in some job interview or in somebody's discussion about the community and the history of it. And then the whole process starts all over again. There's a collateral damage that has to be considered when this information is being released to the public. As a parent, I appreciate what the creep catchers are doing. I appreciate the time that they are taking to try and find and identify people. I appreciate the desire they have to protect children. I was, I said, I'm a parent and I get it and I understand it. And a part of me says that I would like nothing more than to take a pedophile and a pair of tweezers and go to town. But that's not something for me to do. That's not my place as just an average citizen. I can collect the information, I can share the information with the RCMP, but we should be letting the judicial system take its course. Just because the person's under investigation doesn't mean that they're still a threat. That investigation has to include observation. And what if that investigation is ongoing and the creep catchers show up, such as they did in Campbell River, and the person was already being investigated, but then in the wind because he knows he's busted. These are all things that we should be considering, not just as the creep catchers, but as society as a whole, that our conversation online reaches a level that makes us no longer a civilized society. Again, I appreciate the work that the creep catchers do, and I kind of hope they continue to do it. But I also hope that as a social media person, I also hope that they consider how they're presenting this information to the public, when they're presenting this information to the public, and what that information has as an effect on the peripheral of the issue at hand. Have a great social media day, everybody. I'm Sean Smith with The Digital Hallway.